Hebrew kingdom building. Ve'ahavta et Yahua Eloheka beko levavka uko nafsheka uko meodeka be'ahu hadevaim ha'ele asher anoki metavka hayom alevavka beshinantam levaneka bedibarta bam beshivteka beyeteka uvlevteka Bada Erek, Ushupika, Ukumika, Ukeshatam, Leo Ayadeka, Veahu, Leto Tafat Bain, Eneka, Ukevatam, Ame Zuo, Beteka, Uvish Areka. All right, and you shall love Yahuwah your Alua with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and they shall be for frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. Hallelujah. So this goes back to the word that came, uh, well, that, well, those visions that came out about the golden statue. So um, according to Revelation 13, give me that real quick. I think it's Revelation 13, 16 or something. The mark of the beast. You got as I came, Revelation 13, I believe it's, man, I was right on. Revelation 16, I mean, Revelation 13, uh, starting verse 16. You know what, there. let's do this. Let's start at verse 11. Let's read it, let's go. Told her about uh, ver uh, Revelation 13. Hallelujah. Verse Revelation 11. chapter 13. Hallelujah. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the reds. And he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. So this was a beast who was dressed almost kind of had horns like a lamb. It's almost like he was almost like a wolf in sheep's clothing in a sense. Yes, sir. But he spoke like a dragon. Verse 12. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the erects and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from the Shamayim to the erects in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the arrests by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the arrests to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not to not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Let me read that again. He granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Yeah, following this. So he, uh, there was an image that he was causing everybody to worship, basically. Okay. Now look at look at this verse sixteen. Look, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave. He causes who? All. 
free and slave. Oh, that's interesting. To receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. Isn't that in between your eyes, your forehead? Yes, sir. You shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, right? It says here that you have to receive this mark on your right hand or on their foreheads. You shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and they shall be for frontless between your eyes. That's your forehead. It says he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive the mark. Go to Exodus 20 real quick. Keep your, keep your, um, keep your place. Let's start with verse 8. Exodus 20, verse 8. Y'all there? What's it? What's it? Come. Exodus 20, verse 8. Let's go. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it Kodesh. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah your Lord. In it you shall do no work. Who else shouldn't do no work? Keep going. You, nor your son, uh -huh. nor your daughter. Who else? Nor your male servant. Oh, really? Who else? Nor your female servant. Huh. Nor your cattle. Who else? Nor your stranger who is within your gates. That's everybody. Rich, poor, free, and slave, ain't it? Yes, sir. Y'all see this? Like, this is where we at, like, like, this is where we are at. Like, when you go against the commandments, this is probably why pride came up today. It seems like, it's crazy, it's like, it'll be something that's, that's, that's associated with the lesson of, like, the Most High will bring it up during praise and worship. Pride is going against these. Pride is going against these. It's going against these commandments, man, because these commandments is, is, the, is the mark of Yahuwah. It's a sign on your hand and front is between your eyes. It's a sign on your head. That's what Torah means. So all that, uh, as far as the Hebraic breakdown, we know that Torah means instructions, but y'all get what I'm saying. The Hebraic breakdown, though, is about a mark or sign being attached the or to the rosh, which means head. Get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Through revelation, through the ruach, that's the head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we went in for Pesach, and out came the Torah, out came the instructions. And not only that, but they literally marked everybody's head with an Aleph and a Tav Mishpaka. Being sealed to Yahuwah. It happened here. So when you go against those things, that's not a small thing. When you're going against the commandments, we don't want anybody to lose that mark. Now you mark. Now you now you got the mark of the beast, because all the mark of the beast is. Are y'all starting to see the contrast? Yeah. It's people who ain't keeping the commandments. The mark of Yahuwah is those who are submitted and keeping the commandments. The mark of the beast is y'all see they're, they're hand in hand with each other. They're closely related to each other because they're exact opposites. Yes, sir. That's why they're related to each other. You know that uh, exact opposites are related to each other too. That's why um, if somebody says black, somebody will say white. Black and white is related to each other because they're exact opposites. And so 
If you're not keeping the commandments of Yahuwah, if you're not serving Yahuwah, you're joined to Babylon. You're going to serve something. It's either Yahuwah or the, or the world. That's, it. That's the only two options. There's no like in between. It's black or white. There's no gray with this. Not with this. There's some gray, there's some gray with other aspects, but ain't no gray with this. You're either going to serve Yahuwah or you're going to be in the world. You're either going to worship Yahuwah or bow down to the golden statue. That's what's talking about in Revelation. Let's go back to Revelation. Um, wait, wait, stay right there. Wait, wait, stay right there. What's the next verse say right after this? Verse 12. Exodus 20, verse 12. Verse 12. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land which Yahuwah, your Lord, is giving you. Y'all see this? How that was right after that? Like, right, that's because that's, that's they related to each other. Hallelujah. Do you know if you're not honoring your mother and father, that's not just any commandment. That's actually one of the main ten commandments. That's one of the main commandments. So when you are moving in disobedience to your parents, y'all, that is pride. And that is going against the commandments. So we're supposed to be going and being a light to the nations and being on a whole nother level to children, a whole nother level of obedience to your parents and to your mothers and fathers and anybody else. And so what happens is whenever you don't do that, there's almost always consequences. It's gonna show. Let's start with verse six. No, let's start with verse five. Let's read this real quick. I want y'all to see this part too. Revelation 13, verse 5. Verse 5. And he was giving him out, speaking great things and blasphemies. And he said, given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth and blasphemy against Alua to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle. And those who dwell in heavenly place in the Shamayim. So this is somebody who uh, is really wicked. He's blaspheming the Most High and all these things. Not only does he blaspheme the Most High, uh, but he blasphemes the tabernacle and speaks, in, you know, blasphemy is just speaking against. Mm -hmm. So that's how you, man, listen, y'all. When you see people speaking against the things of Yahuwah, <laughs> know what, the, what Ruach they coming from. It don't matter who they are. If they're going in and speaking crazy about the things of the Most High, they're speaking crazy about worship, speaking against it, they blaspheming, speaking against his people. You know what Ruach that's coming from? Verse 7, look at what it says. And it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe tongue and nation so this is uh, this is about the beast and we know that um this happened this is what was going been going on uh, over the la over history just right re you know watch reclaiming the throne this is what this is what this is talking about what has happened um you know with the fourth beast uh the um you know the inquisition they had great authority they made war against us they made it you know and uh they prevailed against us at this time um and then there was authority given over, over them to where they had authority over every tribe, tongue, and nation. So right now, that's why the fourth beast basically runs the world. When we talk about the fourth beast, we're talking about the European powers, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the, the powers behind like Catholicism, um, but really all the major three religions actually. Christianity and Islam too. They are related to each other. Uh, they basically run the world. Uh, right now uh, but look verse 8 all who dwell in the rest will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world oh snap ain't that what happened in Pesach as well do y'all remember that That there was books open 
and, 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 and our names written in it, those who are sealed to Yahuwah, those who are marked. Well, well, names was written in the book, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the, I think it's uh, the Sefer Achai, the book of life. This is what happened. This is what happened. Keep going. Verse 9. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who, lo he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. So this is talking about uh, captivity. Mm -hmm. This is talking about the people who put us into captivity. Y'all got to really see what this is saying. Because we are living this out right now. So basically what this is saying is the people who put us into captivity will go into captivity. That's what it's basically saying. Yeah. Keep going. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Yeah. Here is the patience in the faith, in the faith of the saints. Yeah. He's talking about the people who put us into captivity are going to go into captivity. All those people who came against us, they did prevail against us for a time. The, 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 it's going to be up on their own head. Now, that's why I said at the end, this is the patience and the immunity of the Kodashim. This is the Thub news for us, for the Kodashim. This is the patience and the faith of the Kodashim. This is, this is a great, new, great thing. That's what this is about. Keep going. Verse 11. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the rats, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the arrests and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Verse 13, he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from listen, the Shamaim listen. on the arrests. Y'all see this? In the sight of men. So this this entity, uh, this person or both, is going to be able to do great miracles. How are we going to know that this dude is not with the most high if he's doing great miracles? Mm. I'm asking y'all, for real. It's important. Hmm? Say it again. Have to send a prophet? I hear what you're saying, but but this is the question. Let me let me let me re, let me re, uh, word it. A person is coming. He says, "Man, you know what I'm saying? I'm with the Most High," and does something like this, and fire comes down from the Shabbat. <laughs> and everybody and all the I mean all all the nations are like, "Wow, yeah, he's the one." So how are we how are we gonna have a discernment to be like oh no nah, that ain't it, no nah, man hey hey we gotta we gotta go somewhere else this ain't it, how, yeah no leadership, <laughs> this is important for real, cause man I'm telling you man he gonna do that, fire come from the shine some people are like hey man, hey Mushal I ain't seen you do that before, <laughs> hey look here man look. Uh, he, man, I'm finna go, man. The dude said to follow him. I'm, look, man, you know, ain't hey, no hard feelings or nothing. <laughs> About the lead assembly, for real. How y'all? How how you gonna? Oh, go ahead. I'm back. I just see. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, good. Okay, do do. He said that um, Hasatan was gonna come first and then he was coming. So if we know, you know, like it's in his word that he said he was coming first. I don't, I don't So how are you gonna know though? So you going so so when he does this and the fire comes down, you how are you gonna know you're gonna say, Well, some somebody different was supposed to come first? No. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get. We're supposed to get the dough next day. Then we'll get. Uh, we'll get Simka. Okay. Well, I was gonna say um, because that the signs and wonders, the whole world's gonna follow after that. So, 
my, I have a, a rule, kind of like an internal rule, that when the masses follow, I go the opposite way. So that's, that's, that was what I thought of. That's not too bad, but the only thing is that those people, they'll pull the scriptures up where it shows how the multitudes will follow Yahuwah from the four corners. They'd be like, nah, my, but the scriptures do say the multitudes is going to follow you. They're going to come. This is a fulfillment of their prophecy. They're coming from the four corners. They're flowing. They said the nations will come to the light. Oh, wait, say that again. You see? <laughs> say it again. But they're not honoring Torah. Torah is the, the sign. Oh, man. Go ahead. You know what you mean. I was going to say, um, if I heard correctly that they was going to tell them to worship them. Come. You sure don't come like this. He don't tell you to worship him. Nor did he make you worship him. It says when you should come, they're going to bow down and worship him and say, um. Oh. The scriptures say that the two witnesses will uh, cause fire to come down from the Shamaim. This dude start doing that. Nah, man, that's it. I'm telling you, because the scriptures say right here, this is a fulfillment of that. We're gonna follow this. We're gonna follow them. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta know how you're gonna be able to tell the difference, because you're gonna deceive everybody. By this you you know the Ruach of, of Alua. Every spirit that confesses that Yahushua HaMashiach has come in the flesh is of Alua. And every spirit that does not confess that Yahushua HaMashiach has come in the flesh is not of Alua. And this is the Ruach of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming, is now already in the world. So they won't um, know, because anti, they're Antichrist. So they won't... Um, the, the, the dude does the, the fire. Right. You saying he won't know? No, I'm saying that th you have to test it, and it's not going. They won't. They don't believe that Yahusha has come, or it's coming. So okay. So, so they won't. They don't believe in, in Yahusha. So you're gonna have to test the spirit. Okay. So okay. I think that's good. Yeah. I'll take that. That's good. That's good. Somebody else has some. Go ahead, Emma, go ahead. Oh, I was I was just gonna say one word, prayer. Like you pray at Yahuwah. I pray. Y'all cheats. Go ahead. If we don't line up with Torah, then we don't. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Yeah, oh, that's a great answer. So, Godot did it first. We're going to go stop here because Godot, Godot already had, had, had got it. Um, but Imori, I said the same thing. Torah. That's it. That's all, y'all. Remember, the Torah is the mark of Yahuwah. That's the sign of Yahuwah. So if somebody's not doing that, if they're not following that, then they don't have the mark of Yahuwah. They're not with Yahuwah. I don't care who they is. I don't care what kind of signs they're doing. I don't care if they're flying. I don't care whatever. Yeah. It's real important. Real important, y'all. Because they're going to deceive a lot of people. It, it might be, it says that if, if it's possible, even the very elect, that means there might be some people from the... You'd be like, hey, man, look here. They just do just because you saw the miracles. We, well, I'm, I'm going to follow them. You'll be able to know that they... You'll be able to know that, oh, this is something else going on because they're going to be all the way against the commandments. 
it says he's going to be speaking blasphemies against the tabernacle and against so now the blasphemy might not be no outright blasphemy it might not be like you know i'm going to just go in on the most high no it probably ain't going to be like that it might be something like yeah no 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 we don't need to do no shabbat that's it. no man that's wicked yeah. no we don't need to do that feast days what no we're going to shift that and i have this new feast day we're going to uh uh, blend Christmas with um, Sukkot. It's a Sukkot Christmas new thing that we're going to do uh, in uh, November. You know, put their own date in there. For real. That's it. You have to you have to see if they align, align with the commandments. That's the that is the sign. That's why we can, I can't emphasize that enough. Anybody who's coming against Shabbat, coming against Lot, the Torah, um, any of the statutes, the judgments. I mean, they'll be kissing babies and everything. They'll sing. Oh, they'll, they they might be glowing. They might have a little uh, a little kabod glowing off the back of their head, and then you hear. Huh? And you think they, oh, look, he's just so holy. <laughs> and then when it comes time for Shabbat, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's just better to do this Sunday. It's just much better. <laughs> for real. But he does all these miracles. He, he got to be it. If you don't study his laws, if you don't study his commandments, you won't. You just won't be able to discern it. You won't. You'll. You'll just. You're gonna be. You're gonna be right over there with him. Y'all get it now? Yes, All right. It's that easy. All right. Let's keep going. Verse fourteen. He deceives those who dwell on the erects by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Telling those who dwell on their rest to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. You see what he's telling the people to do? To make an image of the beast. That's the red flag right there. Then verse 15, he was granted power to give breath to the beast that the image of the beast should speak and everything. These are the type of signs they're going to be doing. Right. See, that's the discernment you got to see. Okay, hold on. Well, that's way against Torah. What? He said to worship the beast. He said, I mean, worship the image. Whoa, that's way against Torah. Oh, no, 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 this ain't it. <laughs> this ain't it. Yeah, let me go on over there. But then he starts putting out decrees that if you don't worship the beast, uh, you get killed. Oh, see what I'm saying? It says here, he causes as many as will not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Then verse 16, go ahead, uh, go ahead, Bakira Luf. He causes all. Both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. Anybody who does that is sealed to the sealed to, to Hasatan forever. Just like all those who are, have the mark of Yahuwah are sealed to Yahuwah forever. Hallelujah. See what I'm saying? Let's keep going. Verse 17. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Of the what? The number of his name. Or the number of his name. Hmm, keep going. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. Wait, so the, let him calculate the number of the beast for it is the what? Number of a man. And what's that number? His number 666. Y'all know the Shabbat commandment is surrounded around the number 6 too. Go to Exodus 20. Go back. Hopefully y'all held y'all place. We just think about number um, 
seven, but actually it surrounds around the number six. Oh, we don't even really have to go, go there. We could just read this again, but let's, let's do it. Uh, Exodus 20, verse eight. Let's go ahead and do it. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it Kodesh. What's the next thing it says? Six days. Does it say seven? Nope. What does it say? Say it again, Bakira Lou. What does it say? Six days. Does it say seven? Nope. It says six. There we go. Six days, right? Yes, sir. Six because days. the Shabbat actually surrounds around the number six, too. Mm -hmm. It does. The Shabbat is not just the Shabbat commandment is not only about work, uh, rest and it's also about on this, that you have six days to work. That's a part of the Shabbat commandment. That six days you can participate in the economy. Six days. You can buy or sell. Go ahead, read it, verse 9. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Oh, so six days you, you, you can labor and do all your work. So six days you're supposed to work at your job, right? Yes, sir. But verse 10. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahuwah your Lua. In it you shall do no work. And again, we saw this. Know your daughter, know your son, your male servant, female servant, cattle stranger who is within your gates, nobody. And look at what it says again in verse 11. That's what I'm trying to tell you. This is about six. For yeah. six days, Yahuwah made the Shama'in and the Aretz. See, Yahuwah made the Shama'in and the Aretz in six days. We think the number six is all bad. No, it's not. Keep going. For in six days, Yahuwah made the Shama'in and the Aretz, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore, Yahuwah blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor your father See? and your mother. Wait, hold on. Go back to verse, because uh, remember the next verse is on, on your father and mother. Go back to verse 10. It says, but the seventh day is what? The Sabbath. It's the Yahuwah. Sabbath of Yahuwah, your Lua in it. You shall do no work, and who else should not do your work? You nor your who? Son. Nor your daughter. Turn the, the hearts of the sons back to the fathers, and the hearts of the fathers back to the sons. What were we just talking about earlier? Look, man, your parents say go clean the room, you go clean the room. Parents say go clean the to toilet, go clean the toilet. Parents say take out the trash. In other words, it's six days, we were gonna have you, your, your parents are gonna have you work. But on the Shabbat, we're not gonna tell y'all to do that stuff, are we? Now, it's different with the assembly and things like that and doing the Kodesh work for the house for the Most High's house and there's things that have to be done here, things like that. But generally speaking, I'm not going, we, as parents, we're not going to have y'all, we're not going to be like, hey, you need to go take out the trash on the Shabbat. We're not going to be like, you need to go clean, to clean the toilet and, and clean your room on the Shabbat. It's nor your son nor your daughter is supposed to work on the Shabbat. So in turn though, those other six days, if we're telling you to do something, that ain't the rest days, that ain't Shabbat. We tell you to go, go clean your room and you still laying down. You laying down on your video game, that ain't, oh no, this ain't, this ain't Shabbat, this ain't rest day. Six days you shall work. This your work day, fam. All right, let's go back. Um, and then we see the same thing here. The children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath and observe the Sabbath throughout the generations of the everlasting covenant. The assignment between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, Yahuwah made heaven and earth and on the seventh day cease from working was refreshed. Because in Genesis 1 on the creation week, Yahuwah created everything in six days. So the number six is not all bad. All right, back to Revelation, all right? Revelation 13. Let's go to the very last verse in Revelation 13. 
In verse 18, read that uh, Bakir Aloof, verse 18. Here is the wisdom. See, this is wisdom, y'all. This is wisdom. Keep going. Let him who has understanding. This is Hagma and Bana. Let him who has wisdom, let him who has understanding, understand and calculate what this means. Keep going. Let him calculate what this means, understand and calculate the number of the beast. For it is what? For it is the number of a man. So this number is not only the number of the beast, but it's also the number of man. That means there's a wicked and righteous aspect to this number six. And the number is 666, but, but, but think, the, and on the creation week on day six, the beasts of the field were created, but also man was created. See what I'm saying? Y'all remember when Yahushua said uh, the Sabbath is made for man and not man for Sabbath? Y'all remember that? And it says here that the number six is the number for man. It didn't say that number seven is the number for man. The number six. Yahushua said the Sabbath is made for man. So basically, when it comes to the mark of the beast, it's 666, six, six, but also the mark of Yahuwah is surrounded around the six two, the number 62. It's the Shabbat is what I mean, the Shabbat. It surrounds around you working on six days and resting on the Sabbath. And the mark of the beast, I submit, it surrounds around you working on the Sabbath and resting probably on some other day. <laughs> probably Sunday, huh? <laughs> All right. I think y'all got it, though. All right, y'all. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, 666, six, six, I'm, just, I'm just looking at the number six. Because that's, that's, that's really, it says it's the number for man and beast, so that's the number six. You know, it's just six emphasized the way I look at it. 666 six, six, is the number six emphasized. It's the uwa, right? The uwa. It's the uwa, uwa, uwa. That don't sound right, right? Y'all get what I mean? The, the uwa, the nail, the ten peg three times. So let's uh, go to Vayikra 'all forget this. She let, ain't letting y'all off the hook. Who I read the Torah portion, Miss Parker? Taraji. Oh, okay. Nasita. Oh, you know better. I think. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. It's okay. But we're gonna get you next time because you know now, though. You know now. Oh, you Better, you got to do better. Hey, my Angel. Oh, I'm going to get her. Oh, sis. Oh, I'm going to get her. Not my sister. Oh, man. All right, all the benote, all the daughters in the house representing. Hallelujah. All right. All right, Nathaniel, let's get, a, let's get an analytical assessment. We need some an analytics here. Ninety-eight percent. All right, y'all. We are not at a hundred percent. That's all the ninety-eight percent mean. I mean, we didn't make it. We didn't hit the mark. 
All right, y'all. We got to get at 100%. It's all or nothing when it comes to this thing, man. That's right. One accord. Hold on. Interesting. All right, y'all ready, Viker 25? Let's go. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe on the Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, then the land shall keep a Sabbath. It shall keep a what? Sabbath. So we're talking about Shabbat still, ain't we? These are the marks of the Most High. So we have the land Shabbat too. The land Shabbat is really, I submit, more than just a Shabbat for the land. Keep reading. Verse 3. Six years you shall sow your field. You see that number six in there, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? In six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. But in the seventh year, there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land. See, the number six is a time of double portion if you are obedient. It's the time of the, uh, the double portion is she-she. You know the she-she, that's the, uh, the two sheens, that's the connotation of two mouths. It's like a, it's, it's, it's the symbolism of a double portion, yam she-she. Y'all get him? Sheen yo, sheen yo. Uh, if you're keeping the commandments, that's a time of, uh, of blessings, of being fruitful, of a double portion. So that you'll be through for the Shabbat, so that you'll be able to just rest on the Shabbat. You'll just be able to rest in your works. You get what I'm saying? Um, but if you're disobedient, she, she is a time of judgment or the connotation of judgment that's like you being you, you know it's either you get marked by the beast or marked by Yahuwah you know what I'm saying but you marked by the beast she she is a, the connotation of uh, you 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 know judgment is a double pressing double crushing she either a double portion or a double crushing for real because the sheen can also mean the press and the crush you know what I'm saying uh, you know the sheen is three hundred too. So if you get two, if you get two sheens, that's six hundred. So you still you still see the number six even with that, even when you look at it from that perspective. But let's keep going. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard with groves of its own accord of your heart. Oh, harvest. let me say this too. This just came, man. Told out you. Uh, the Ua is also the number six. And the Ua is about being secure. And y'all already know, most people, especially the Akio, know that you don't feel the, the best way, one of the best ways to feel secure is being provided for, having provisions. That's the number six. The Ua, being secure, double portion, these are all surrounded around the number six. Let's keep going. So six years you shall do what? I lost my place, where was that? <laughs> my bad, verse three. Verse three, okay. Six years you shall sow your field. In six years, you shall prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. But so, so in your field, you know, bring uh, teaching is, is is a way to is kind of like dropping seeds onto the ground, bringing out words. So in the field, six years you shall prune your vineyard. Y'all know pruning. That's zamar. That's bringing out song. Yeah. 
That's the word Zamar. So bringing our teachers, bringing our work, praise and worship, and then the teaching. That's pruning and so on the field, y'all. Yeah, the, um, yeah, Zamar, singing and song is a weapon. So that's why when you prune in the uh, field, you prune it with, um, with a weapon, with the Zan, which is the uh, first letter of Zamar. The, uh, uh, whatever you call it, the cutting tool, the harvesting tool. Sickle, toda, toda. Keep going. Verse four. But in the seventh year, there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest. Wait, 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 hold on. In six years, you shall prune your vineyard and do what? And gather its fruit. Yeah. You bring up the word, you bring out the song, and then you gather. And then you gather, like, what is, what's that word for gather? Is it para or something like that? Or is it neb or? Is it para? That's gather. Gather, right? Yeah. Oh, it don't say fruit? Yeah, that's crazy. No, I didn't even know, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Tabua, what? This is interesting. Yeah, that means produce or increase. Okay, got it, okay. So it's not the specific word for fruit. Actually, that word doesn't really mean, it means like gather your increase. Um, it's not like par or, uh, or, or not knob, nob. So it's a general, more of a general term. Gather your increase. And that is interesting that the word they use for gather is asa. That's very interesting. Verse 4. But in the seventh year, there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to Yahuwah. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. You shall neither do what? Sow your field or prune your vineyard. So the Shabbat of the land is not just for the land to rest, but that also if you are an ancient Israelite, and Israel was an agrarian society, you actually are gonna be resting that year. That's your job, Is that's what you work, you farmers. Everybody, they were people who had inheritance in land, it was an agrarian society. Now there's probably some, you know, there's some, uh, they had locksmiths and things like that, they had other, you know, but for the most part, it was an agrarian society, for the most part. So you had a whole community of people who rested for a whole year. That had to take a whole lot of, um, depending on your hua for your sustenance mm -hmm. to do something like that. Hallelujah. That had to take a whole lot of immunah, didn't it? Keep going. Verse five, with groves of his own accord, of your harvest, you shall not reap, nor gather the grapes of your intended vine, but it is a year of rest for the land. And the Sabbath produce of the land shall be food for you. For you, your male and your female servants, your hired man and the stranger who dwells with you. For your livestock and the beasts that are in your land, all its produce shall be for food. All right, keep going. And you shall count seven Sabbaths of the year for yourself, seven times seven years. In the time of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be to you 49 years. Then you shall, then you shall cause a trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month. So remember we talked about that, so then you, it's cause the, the yo bell is just a trumpet, it's a shofar. So you should, you should, you should cause the shofar of the Jubilee uh, to sound on the 10th day. So we know 
that number 10 is about submission. Mm -hmm. We know that's about obedience. We know these things. Amen. On the 10th day of the seventh month, on when? Yom Kippur, right? Yes, sir. So, we understand that the Yobel is on the 50th day. Okay? The Hebrew word for number 50 is Hamashim. Very significant word, y'all. Because this is associated with Shavuot too, because Shavuot's on the 50th day, right? So Shavuot is like a, a jubilee uh, every year. It's like associated with it, but you count the weekly Sabbath, seven Sabbaths. The jubilee, you count uh, the yearly Sabbath, the Shemitah year, seven of those, and then the 50th year is the jubilee. Oh, uh, Shavuot, you count seven weekly Sabbaths, and on the 50th day is Shavuot. Number 50, y'all, uh, Hamashim. Hamashim. So, just a, a quick breakdown. It's about chaos staying outside the gates by cutting or pressing the powers in the seas. So it's about chaos staying outside the gates by cutting or pressing the powers in the waters or the powers in the seas. It's lakam la shalom, in other words. Battle under peace. Get it? It's about chaos staying outside the gate. The chaos staying outside the gate by cutting or pressing the sheen, the powers, that's the yob, that are in the seas, that are in the water. You get what I'm saying? But now let's look at this, y'all. So, the, um, the word Hamashim, literally, this is the word Shamaim right here. What's the only difference between Shamaim and Hamashim? What's the only difference? Who said that? Oh, yeah, you right on it. You sounded, you sounded like, yeah, you, you sounded like Bakir Yameen Man. I was going to say, you don't count. <laughs> Not leadership. No, you're right. <laughs> no, you're right on the money. No, so the only difference is that it's, uh, is the het, which he said, the gates. So what this is showing, I mean, think of it. Y'all, this stuff don't be by coincidence. Y'all, look. If you just do this, that Shamaim is just, is just mixed up. That's Shamaim. All you gotta do is put this sheen right here. Flip those two, you got the word Shamaim, y'all, heavens. This is showing you that the number 50 is associated with the Shamaim, y'all. So that's why Shavuot was, so that's why the Shamaim was open on Shavuot, wasn't it? You know what I'm saying? That's why the Jubilee is all about the kingdom of the Shamaim. It's all about it. It's about the regathering. It's about the kingdom of heaven being established, y'all. And also, as uh, Godot brought out, um, it's the gates. So Hamashim is, is, is like the gates. It's like the gates of heaven. It's like the gates to get into heaven. It's like the gates to the Shamaim. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like the gates of the Shamaim, like the, the Yobel. Yeah, if you're not of those of the Yobel, if you're not of those that are regathered, then you're not getting in. Look, think about this in Acts chapter 2. Y'all all familiar with Acts chapter 2? Very common passage, so I'm just assuming everybody's familiar with it, but it's okay if not. So we can go there, but I'll just, I'll just throw it out there. Y'all can read it on your own time if you really just don't argue right, with me. Acts chapter 2 is, it was, a, uh, was, a, was a famous scripture that happened on Shavuot, okay? 
It was right after, it was the first Shavuot after Yahushua resurrected him. The first Shavuot after the crucifixion. What happened on Shavuot in Acts chapter 2? Whoa. Yes, throw down. I just heard. <laughs> the Ruach fell on the assembly, right? Or the, on, on the Mishpach, I guess we should say. The Shamaim was open. It was the dividing tongues and things like that. And then the Ruach f fell on everybody. Y'all familiar with Acts chapter 2 and that story? Okay. So, keeping that in mind. Yeah, oh, I almost lost what I was going to say. Hallelujah. I told Ayusha. Those who didn't, weren't there in Acts chapter 2, if you weren't there, you didn't receive that. Do you know that the people who want, like if you was just like that day, hey man, look, I, ain't gonna, I don't feel like going. You know, they travel from all around the world to go and, and keep Shavuot. They travel from all around the world. It said it. When you read Acts chapter 2, it'll read all the different nations that the Yahudim where they had traveled from. It was like Yahudim from all these nations. They named like all these nations. Yeah. But do you know? Do you know that those who didn't go, who decided not to go, didn't receive the Ruach? Y'all realize that? What if you was just like, man, I don't even know if we really supposed to be, you know, because we in captivity. I don't, I, I don't even know if we really supposed to be keeping Shavuot like that no more because they, they say, because I don't think you're supposed to be keeping it while you're in captivity, man. You know, Rome is over there, man. Them Pharisees, they kind of wicked, man. You know, I'm going to just keep it at home. You know, they didn't get the Ruach. Hamashim, the gates to the Shamaim. This is the gate. You gotta go. You gotta be there. That's why people had, um, you know, this Shavuot, I'll pray to the Most High. So, uh, told I, oh, and told I to you who and Yahushua for all of y'all, man. Y'all did. Through with hosting. Man, praise Yahushua. Praise Yahoo and Yahusha. Food team, cleanup team, Moed team. All praises to the Most High. Man, Shoreen, man. Shoreen was on it, man. Shoreen was on it. Because, you know, that, uh, that area ain't the, you know, it ain't the best area. Um, so just being on top of everything, just making sure everybody through. That was through. And so, um, But usually, keeping Shavuot is a sacrifice. Because usually, you, Pesach, you usually, most people usually go all in for Pesach. But then you got to keep Shavuot 50 days later. That come up quick, man, because you just spent a lot of resources to do, shit, to, do, to do Pesach. So it's usually a major sacrifice to do Shavuot. Because there's not a whole lot of time between that one and, uh, and, and Pesach. You get what I'm saying? And that's how it was. Shavuot, people was traveling from all around, right? You know, from all around. You know, I know um, HRT is not, is not as close as they used to be. You know, they had to travel like four or five hours now to get to Austin, man. Uh, OKC, they're coming from five and a half hours, you know. If I'm driving, it might be about seven. <laughs> about seven hours. <laughs> Yeah, because I took the drive before. They were like, it took that long, man. It only takes five hours to get down there, man. And I don't know. It took, it took it like seven. We made too many stops, I guess. But, um. <laughs> but it was, it was coming from everywhere, you know, and it was coming down here, you know, to, uh, to do Shavuot. And so. If you weren't there, I'm telling you, that's what, we started realizing how important the feast days was to where that's a requirement. Everybody got to be at the feast days, you know, unless it's, 
just, we just say everybody got to be defeated there. We know that the Archeo have certain things that may come up. Someone's having a baby during that time. Of course, we know the, we know the exceptions. We're not gonna get into any exceptions. We're just gonna say it how it is. It's a requirement to be at the feast days. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell y'all before we start, we, we understand why Yahuwah did that and made that a requirement now because before the, we had a bunch of people. Oh man, yeah, I got a lot to going on in my job and stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? You know. <laughs> Oh man, you know, and so there was like, there'll be people in the trial who will, you know, they just wouldn't come to the, a lot of the feast days because it's a sacrifice. And so, you know, there'll be every Shabbat. Oh man, where's it going to be at again? <laughs> I bet this one going to be uh, in Dallas. Oh man, you know, because after I had paid my bills, man, you know, and, and then I got to, man, my job, you know, uh, I'm going to make it to the one next year. And we would just be like, oh, all right, we under, you know, we like, hey, man, look, all right. But then, we, you know, we always, you know, in our minds, like, man, we're going to try to make it a, you know, we didn't make it a priority, you know, so we always. But what we notice is that the most, what the Most High does during those feast days, those who miss it, it's like, then you get back, and it's like all of a sudden they're like, well, it's, a, it's an ascent, it's a something. It's hard to explain, man, because we, we, I've seen it over and over again over the years. It's like when you come back from the feast days, it's a different level that you be on. And then whoever didn't go, whoever didn't, it's, it's like you missed a huge, it's a window. It's the gates to the shaman, man. It's like, it's something that the Most High did, did to everybody. So then if you was one of the ones that wasn't there, you, you behind now. We saw that, man, and then it's just slowly it just become more far and further and behind, and it's to the point to where it's like they veering off, they veer out. You know what I'm saying? Not getting removed or nothing. You know, well, it's one person who got removed. That's because he missed all the feast days, though. He's just missing a lot, and then he was he was lying. It was a lot of stuff, but most of everybody, most of everybody uh, who wasn't going to the feast day, they just we saw they just slowly faded away, man. For real. Like back in the library days, like he was so behind because he missed all the feast day. In my mind, I'm thinking, but we come to the Shabbat, he should be able to catch on. It's some, it, it, I don't know what it is. It's something that you who it does where you just it ain't the same. If you're not going to the feast days, you got to do it all. You got to do the Shabbat and the feast days. Y'all ever um had any uh oh, my bad? Yeah, any fam family members or homeboys who was in jail for a long time. And then they uh, they get out, and then they like they like still stuck in the time frame before they got locked up. What was that? That was on "I'm gonna get you, sucker." Y'all seen that? Yeah. <laughs> With the dude, he was yeah, yeah. He still was wearing the '70s clothes. <laughs> yeah, guy, he was in the jail for a long time. He got out, and he was walking with his uh '70s clothes. He was still. He was still saving it, saying it, saying the uh, joke, the job turkey. Yeah. And he thought he was cool. That's how it was with that arc, man. Like the stuff. Oh, oh yeah. Y'all ain't seen I'm gonna get you sucker. Oh, y'all don't know what that is. Woo! Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the fish tank. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot his name. I didn't want to give too many details because of what he was. But I'm just saying he was dressing in seventies guard gear. That's why, you know, what I'm saying. <laughs> Everybody was laughing at him. <laughs> Who saying I'm gonna get you, sucker? I don't think enough people seen it to know what I'm talking about. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I know a lot of a lot of y'all were born here because I was young when that came out. I was young. I think I might have been like middle school or something. Maybe even younger than that. <laughs> but let's just put it this way: if somebody was uh, locked up, especially over like five to ten years, like a long time. What'll happen, because it happened to my homeboy. 
you you be stuck. It's like you you miss that whole wind of that time that you're locked up. You, it's it's hard to explain. Like you don't, cause since you was out not in the outside world, soon as you get up get out, it's like you you start back from where you left off. That's all you know. And so, um, you know your clothes, um, the music. You know you bringing up people like man, yeah that was man. Ain't, that ain't nothing. Ain't nobody jamming that no more, man. Like, man, yeah, man. You know, and just things like that. And that's how it is, like, when you, there are windows that happen in the, during these feast days. So, it's about being aligned with the Shamaim, for real. Man, that's why it's Hamashim. It's about being aligned with the Shamaim, like, like, it's that narrow path, so... So you keep the Shabbat every Shabbat, right? You're on that narrow path. That's every. That's once a week. It's like then those six days you're working and you you getting immer- you in, in that world, you in the, amongst the nations for them six days. So it's like you veer up, then you keep Shabbat. Boom, get you right back. And you see what I'm saying? And then you go on, you doing your thing. Six days, you, start, you know, kind of veering out, and that Shabbat come. Boom, get you back right. You know what I'm saying? And then what happens is that those feast days, though. It's like, then you keep, a, okay, now it's Pesach, and it's like, vroom. See what I'm saying? Get you back right, but then, you, then it's an ascension. You know what I'm saying? And then um, now you're going back to Shabbat. Six days you work, you veer, but you get back right on Shabbat. Six days you work, you kind of veering away, get back on the Shabbat. Then, oh, oh snap, Shabbat, whoa, <laughs> And so, anybody who wasn't there, man, you, you just doing Shabbat only? You missing that? Like, I can't, I can't explain with words how that went down this Shabbat. I tried to, man, it was so powerful. That's the best I could say. I don't got no words to explain that. That joke was crazy. That was amazing. For real. You have to be there. You have to be there. That's why it's a requirement. Hamashim, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, right, so I want y'all to look at a couple of things with this word because there's a a, a few, so y'all will start seeing some patterns when you're studying Hebrew words and studying Hebrew that you should also look to see if there's any other words in that word because it's, it's, it's giving you some more uh, understanding of what's, what it's all about. You get what I'm saying? So, another word that you'll see in there is Hamish. That's five, that's the number five. Um, and then you see the word Yom, that's the word for the seas, the oceans. You get what I'm saying? Yom is about the strong powers that come from the waters. But this is another interesting thing about the word Hamashim is that you have Ham and Shem in there. I remember we talked about that last year? You got Ham, that's Het Mim, and you also have Shem in the word, Sheen Mim. Who was Noah's sons? Ham, Shem, and who? But Japheth ain't in there. Where's Japheth? And remember, this is about the Shamaim, the gates to the Shamaim. This is showing you that Japheth didn't make it. They're not making it in the kingdom. This is why when you read scriptures, when do you, how many times do you hear about anybody from Japheth? Do you hear about anybody from Japheth uh, 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 as any of the mixed multitude, as, as dealing with anybody in, in Yasharel, dealing with Dawid? Dawid dealt with all kind of people. He had Hittites in his army. He had all kind of people. You don't hear nothing about Japheth. Nobody from those, the descendants of Japheth. They, didn't, they don't make it, y'all. That's what this is showing in the Hebrew. Literally, the word Hamesh, literally, the word for number five is Ham and Shem in them. Ham and Shem.
Now this is going to, now remember Ham and Shem is also in the word for number five, Hamesh, and the word for 50, Hamashim, right? Look at this, y'all. This is Bereshit chapter. Look what it says. And Noah was, that's, that says Hamesh in the Hebrew. Hamesh Maya, 500. And Noah was five. Hamesh, 100, or Maya, years old. And Noah begot. That's a play on words. So Noah was Hamesh and begot Shem and Ham. You see what I'm saying? Not only that, this was in Bereshit chapter 5, Miss Parker. And this was just, this was just, when you read the whole chapter, it's like they just, it, it seems very obscure. This is the end, last verse of that chapter. And then chapter six goes into about Noah's Ark and stuff, but this was just thrown in there in chapter five. You know, it wasn't just thrown in there, but I'm just saying it's, it's, it was, it seems almost that verse almost out of place, but it's because it's screaming something to you. It's screaming that I submit that the Jubilee, Hamesh, Hamashim, the number 50, the Jubilee is about, we know it's about the kingdom of heaven and, and it's about the ark. It surrounds around the ark or it's, it's associated with the ark. Well, Yahuwah starts all over with, 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 a, with a bloodline where this, this family comes together. They're preserved while everybody else is, 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 is judged. It's where this family is regathered, is gathered. They're preserved while the rest of the, uh, of the nation is judged. Nations are judged. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Because this, this is, if you look at the Hebrew, it's Hamesh Meah. That's actually five, and then Meah actually means 100. So Hebraically, it's like saying, and Noah was five, 100 years old, it means 500 we know in English, but if you like technically, Hebraically it says five and then 100. It's two separate words. It's not one word, 500, it's not. It's five and then 100 years old and Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. There's a reason why I'm bringing that up because 100 is about the hundredfold family. So Ham, Shem, and Japheth, their wives, Noah, his wife, and then how many of them were there? Yeah, it was eight. That's Shemini. The number eight in Hebrew is Shemini. Shemini. I don't have a slide for it. Yeah, I don't have it. But it's the same word for Shamayin as well. It's just in a different... Um, so there's two words for Shamayin. It's Shamayin with an M at the end and Shamayin with an N at the end. Nancy at the end. Oh, it's now. Yeah, everybody ain't gonna see that though. Oh, you put in the chat, yeah. Told out. The number eight. So we see an association with the regathering in the ark because what happened with uh, Noah's ark was like a jubilee. It was a regathering. That's why you saw the, these all these fives in there surrounding Noah's ark. It was like a jubilee. It was a regathering. All these animals gathered to him and got into the ark, and it was and, and, and it was him, his sons, and their wives got on. It was eight people. And then the, the flood hit the earth. All right, y'all. Let's go back to Viker 25.
Y'all ready? Okay. I think we're on verse 9. Bakir yes, Luke. Yes, sir. Nine. Okay. Then you shall cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. On the day of atonement. So that's on Yom Kippur, right? That's on Yom Kippur. Or Kippur is another way you can say it. It means atonement or ransom. And what's the breakdown for Kippur? Not, not leadership. Say it again. Yeah. It's about receiving a word from the heads. It's about receiving a word from Yahuwah's heads. It's about receiving a word from the Rosh, receiving a word from the chief, receiving a word from the heads. That's what the, the, uh, the Rosh means, head, chief, leaders, etc., etc. That's why the, uh, the Yobel, the Jubilee is blown on the Day of Atonement, which is on the 10th day. Remember we said the 10th day is about submission. The number 10 is about submission and obedience. And they call it Yom Kippur, the day of Kippur, the day of receiving the word from the heads. That's the breakdown of that word. What is this showing? This is showing that those who are regathered for the Yobel, those who are regathered for the Jubilee, those who are regathered for the Maya, 100, 100 fold family, and become part of, are those who can receive a word from their heads. That's those, those are the ones who are ransomed. Those are the ones who are atoned for, is those who can receive a word from their heads. If you cannot do this, then you are not, you are not covered. For real. You gotta ask yourself, for real. Like, if you like just can't you just uh, you just have an issue you you do when everything is through but whenever it's, uh, a word goes out whenever uh, you know any of the leaders gives you a word about anything you can't you just can't you can't take it it might be because you're not this you know i hope that's not the case but it's just it's just the truth this we've seen it for we've seen it for quite a while no matter how much we try, you know, certain people, no matter how much we try, they just wasn't able to receive a word. And, you know, they, it just, they just wasn't, they wasn't atoned for, they wasn't covered. They wasn't accounted for, that's why. That's why. They're not of the hundredfold family. That's why, they're not. Because if you were, if you were, you would, you would receive these words. Isn't that what Yahushua said to the Pharisees? They said, we're Abraham's children. And Yahushua was like, no, you're not. Because if you were, you would have been able to receive my words that I was bringing out. No, I know who your father is. And it's not Abraham. So with the Yo Bell being blown on Yom Kippur, this is showing that the Yo Bell is for those who are atoned for. The Yo Bell, the Jubilee, is for those who are covered and atoned for. For those who those who are not atoned for, those who are not covered, that actually is gonna be judgment on that day for them. We got it? All right, all right. Let's keep going. On the day of atonement, you shall make the trumpet to sound throughout your land. Verse 10, and you shall consecrate the 50th year. Which year? 50th. Kamashim, let's go. And proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. So that liberty is for those who are covered. That's not for everybody, that's to all those who are atoned for. Keep going. It shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his possession. And what else? And each of you shall return to his family. To his mishpaka. Remember that. That's the regathering. Yes, sir. That's where we are. Keep 
Keep going. That 50th year shall be a jubilee to you. In it you shall neither sow nor reap, but grows of its own accord, nor gather the grapes of your intended vine. We'll, leave it, we'll, we'll keep it right there. We'll stop there. Let's go ahead into chapter 26. Are y'all ready? All right, look what it starts off with. This is the Torah portion, verse 1. Ye shall not make idols for yourselves. Isn't this what came out down to an image? Look what it says. Neither a carved image nor a sacred pillar shall you rear up for yourselves. Nor shall you what? Nor shall you set up an engraved stone in your land. To do what? To bow down to it. Then we have multiple visions of of of, of, of a, a image and, and people not of an idol and people not mm -hmm. trying to, you know, not wanting to bow down to it and things like that. Right. That's the first verse of this Torah portion. Right. We were talking about last last week's Torah portion just earlier, but now we in this week's Torah portion starting right now. Keep going. For I am Yahuwah, your Elua. You should keep my Sabbaths. You see what it says right after that? You know why? Because the Sabbath is the, is the sign in the mark of Yahuwah. And if you're not keeping the Shabbat, you're going to be bowing down to the statues. For real. You're going to have a mark of the beast if you don't have a mark of Yahuwah. There's no in between. So he starts off. You shouldn't do on the thing. You shouldn't bow down to this image. You shall keep my Sabbaths. And what else is it saying? In reverence my sanctuary. Reverence what? My sanctuary. The Mikdash. That's actually Mem and then Kodesh. It's just Kodesh with the Mem in the front. So it's like the set apart place for the peoples. The Mikdash. It's the assemblies. Yes, the assemblies are considered his sanctuaries. This is the same word used in Ezekiel 11 when it says that in the places where you are scattered I'll I'll be as sanctuaries in the areas that you are scattered. That goes back to Abraham's bosom, a little sanctuary, even in the midst, midst of Sheol. And it says, you shall reverence my sanctuary. And that word is Yare. You shall fear my sanctuary. In other words, you can't come and take these assemblies as common. Didn't that word come out too? Yes, sir, came out. Yeah. <coughs> Reverence the sanctuary, y'all. This is the sanctuary. This is a set. This is a mikdash, the set apart place for you, uh, 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 for the Most High's people. Let's keep going. I am Yahuwah. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and perform them, so walk. So there's a walk. That's the walk, the halakha, maybe. I don't, I don't know for sure if that's the word. In my statutes. So statutes is, is, is halakha? Halakha? Oh, so it's halak, yeah, so same thing. It's the root word. And so um, to walk in the statutes, remember this is a journey. This is a, this is a, a path, right? The statutes are usually uh, associated with the time and the, the feast days were surrounded around time. Like, I mean, the commandments surrounded around time like the feast days, okay? Like Shabbat. So if you halak in my statutes, and then what? And perform them. No, uh, halak in my statutes, and then do what? I'll keep my commandments. That's Shamar, is it? Is that Shamar? Is that Shamar? Okay, so you, you halak the statutes, guard or Shamar, that's the guard, like aggressively guard the commandments, and then perform them. I don't know what that word is. How's it spelled? Oh, A-S-A, okay. Ayan Sheen, hey? Ayan Sheen, hey? Oh, okay. Okay, interesting. And perform them. So if you do these three things, walk, halak in the statutes, shamar the commandments, and perform them. Then verse four. Then I will give you rain in its season. Mm. The land shall yield its produce. 
in the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. So he's gonna make he's gonna make it to where we are fruitful, y'all. He's gonna make it to we, where we are through, to where we are um, flourishing. Keep going. Verse five. Your threshing shall last to the time of vintage, and the vintage shall last to the time of sowing. You shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none will make you afraid. I will rid the land of evil beasts, and the sword will not go through your land. You will chase your enemies, and they shall fall by the sword before you. They shall do what? Fall by the sword before you. Okay, let's look at this tree. I want y'all to focus on in on verse 8. It's interesting that this is verse Shimini. It's very interesting. Let's read it. Five of you. How many? Five. How many? Five. Hamesh, right? All right, let's go. Hamesh people of you shall do what? Should chase a hundred. Oh, so you got the number five, and then you got mayor, the number for uh, the word for a hundred again. So, and what else? And a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. Oh, snap. That's the hundred, that's about the hundred four family. That's it. Man, look here. He make it up. This is associated with the Yobel. That's why this, this is right after uh, chapter 25 about the Yobel. It's associated with the regathering. That's why all these blessings, it's like, man, you know, if, as long as you keep, these, keep my Sabbaths, you, you keep these, you, keep, you make sure you do the Jubilee, the law surrounding these things, this is what's gonna come. All these blessings are gonna come to you. And five, Ham and Shem of you, <laughs> Shall chase a hundred. Then it says, then a hundred of you, it says put 10,000 to flight, but I'm, I, I don't believe that's what that really means. Because that word is based off of Rabbah, which just means a whole lot. It's a whole lot of people. It's not really a specific number. You know, like when people say Toda Rabbah, it just means a whole lot. Th thanks a whole bunch. You know what I'm saying? Um... It says five of you shall chase a hundred, but a hundred of you? Oh, no, you, you chase everybody. Oh, no, 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 a yeah. hundred of you? Oh, no, you chase a multitude. A hundred of you? Oh, snap, now you will rule the world. That's what this is saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm wondering why they put 10,000 there. Nah, that ain't what they're saying. Yeah, because a hundred is about the hundredfold family. That's what it's. That's what's hidden in here. That's what it's really saying. When it's saying a hundred of you, it's talking about the hundredfold family. Oh yeah, the hundred. When the whole when the hundredfold family is established, y'all gonna rule the world. You gonna chase. You gonna. You gonna. You gonna have dominion over the multitudes. The Hebrew word for chase is radop. Y'all know dominion is radar. Let's look at this Hebrew word for 100. Let's look at this. Uh, I think we're pretty much almost done. Pretty, I'm pretty sure. It's maya. It's the word for 100. And remember, even within that script, that verse in, 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 in Bereshit 5 with Noah, that word 100 was in there too. It said Noah was 5 maya. It's mem. Aleph, hey. Anybody want to take a shot at it? You want to? <laughs> the separation of the head or the strong leader by revelation? That's a through, it's separation of the head by the strong leader through revelation. Okay. 
to reveal the strong leader of the nation? Yeah, that's that's, that's really, very, really close to what I got too. Yeah. So this is what I got, y'all. Um, it's about the it's a, it's it's it's, a, it's, the, it's about the strong leaders being revealed in the midst of the nations. It's about the strong leaders being revealed in the midst of the nations. Remember what we've been talking about, y'all, who the hundredfold family really is. Hundredfold family are Malachim, they sons of light. The hundredfold family is not regular people. A Nabi'im, a kingdom of Nabi'im messengers, sons of light, Malachim, from the Shamaim. That's who the hundredfold family is. That's who the Jubilee is for. That's what the Jubilee is about. At least the end time Jubilee is what I'm talking about. It's a time when their heads will be revealed in the midst of the nations. It's like when the dry ground starts being revealed from the, uh, from the midst of the waters and the dry ground starts to appear. And what's happening is that the Kodesh ones are being revealed. They're starting to ascend out of the waters and be seen. Okay, let's go back, Viker 26. It's the last part of verse eight. Start uh, eight over again. Okay. Five of you should chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight. Your enemies shall fall by the sword before you. But I yeah. will look. Keep going, my friend. But I will look on you favorably and make you fruitful, multiply you, and confirm my covenant with you. So, that word for confirm is actually, I'm, I'm, it's like rising up the, co the, the covenant for you. Like, uh, uh, it's almost like let, letting it rise up. It's, it's cool to rise. My covenant with you for I will look. So that's, you notice right after it talks about how a hundred will put a multitude to flight. Then it goes on about looking on you favorably and making you fruitful and multiply. Isn't that where we at now? Code this seed. Because Yahuwah is revealing, is, is revealing us in the midst of the nations. Keep going, verse 10. You shall eat the old harvest and clear out the old because of the new. I will set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abhor you. I will walk among you and be your Elohim, I mean your Lua, and you shall be my people. I am Yahuwah, your Lua, who brought you out of the land of Misraim, that you should not be their slaves. I have broken the bands of your yoke, made you walk upright. But if you do not obey me. Stop there. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16. We'll start with verse 5. Everybody there? Y'all gonna, gonna, gonna start seeing stuff when y'all start reading these other scriptures now. Let's look. Now when his disciples had come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Yahushua said to them, 
Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They reason among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. But Yahushua, being aware of it, said to them, O you of little faith, why do you reason among yourself because you have brought no bread? Do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves? How many? What? Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Uh oh. <laughs> man, hold on, man. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> man, what's going on here, man? All right, read verse 9 again. Do you not understand? All remember the five loaves and what else of the five thousand and how many baskets you took up come on man verse 10 hold on hold on come on man yeah so that should automatically take you back to your bell Hamesh, the number five so the word for leaven is hametz, right? That's the word for leaven, hametz, ketmim, sad, one of those. Let me make sure. Let me make sure. Let's go to uh, Exodus. All right, told out. Told out. So that's interesting. He said, Beware of the Hamets, the leaven of the Pharisees. Beware of the Hamets, the leaven of the Pharisees. And then, um, basically, that was about a doctrine, right? That was about teaching, right? Then he said, you remember the Hamesh loaves of bread? Basically the Hamesh <laughs> loaves of Hametz, <laughs> living bread. It's a play on words, it's, it's Hebraisms in there. But nevertheless, let's go back, Matthew 16. Let's keep going. I think we're in verse nine, read verse nine again, and it will keep going. Yes, sir. Do you not yet understand I remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many bas baskets you took up, nor the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many large baskets you took up. How is it you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread, but be but to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread. But of what? But of the doctrine, of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So don't, don't, that's how you know this is about the Obel and the Jubilee, because wasn't the Jubilee about receiving the word? Yes, sir. A doctrine, right? That's what the doctrine is, it's a word. And he said, beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees, man. He said, beware of that le that's leaven. Just receive my words. Let's keep going. Verse 12. Well, verse 13. 13, yes. When Yahushua came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do, you mean, who do you men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So this is giving you, this is just a side note, this is giving you an idea of how ancient Israelites looked at things. Mm -hmm. 
notice they people were saying that Yahusha was Elijah. They're talking about the prophet Eliyahu from Yeah. They thought he was Yermiyahu. So there's some understanding that the Israelites had back in the day that's a little different than the way we look at things now. Why would they think that Yahushua was Yermiyahu when Yermiyahu was from like what, like 400 years before? This time was about 400 years before this? Like 600 BC or something like that. It's around when Babylon, he was around when Babylon was just, uh, destroyed Jerusalem. So I think that was six something BC. So that was like 600 years before this. So why in the world would anybody think that Yahushua could have been Yermiyahu? That's just something to think about, y'all. Eliyahu was around way before that. The immerser? Yeah, 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 he was gone at this time. That, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yehuganah was, was, was beheaded, y'all. So it's just something to think about. We ain't gonna, you know, I'll just let y'all think on that. Cause that's, a whole, that's a whole lesson in and of itself. Verse 15. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Messiah, son of the living Elua. Yahushua answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father, who is in the, in the Shamaim. Mm -hmm. And I also say to you that you are Peter. Mm -hmm. And on this rock, I will build my assembly. assembly. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. The gates of who? Hades. What is Hades? So you got the gates of the Shamaim, that's Hamashim. Then you got the gates of Sheol. Hmm. See the assembly, y Yahushua had already had it set up to where he was gonna stay. This was his old goal, he was gonna establish these assemblies that were gonna be little places of refuge. That would bring, I'm talking about that will invade, I guess is the best way to put it. This is invasion language. When it's, he said, and the gates of Sheol shall not prevail against it. We talked about this before. So this isn't like we're just gonna sit around and the gates of Sheol, they're gonna try to come and get, get coming and attack us, but they won't be able to, they won't, they won't be able to get in. No, that's not, the, that's not what's being stated here. No, this is offensive language, invasion language. This says, I will build my assembly and the gates of Sheol shall not prevail against the assemblies. I mean, uh, y'all see, y'all give y'all, y'all following like the assembly is coming offensively and the gates of Sheol won't be able to, won't be able to handle the invasion. We invade and taking territory from, from the enemy for, for the most high. You get what I'm saying? Sir. Like when you're doing a deliverance, that's what that is. What out, man? Part of the was about the cleansing of the bloodline. Do y'all know how serious that is? Some of y'all done went through deliverance and y'all whole bloodline has been sealed to Sheol for generations. For real. Four, five generations of, I'm talking about just straight sealed to Sheol. Whoremongers, idolaters. Um, Liars, thieves, for real. Four, five generations, some, some of y'all a lot more than that. Some of y'all have murderers in y'all bloodline. 
Seal to the bad part of Shio. And so the enemy looks at you as his. Like, and the enemy's like, oh yeah, we got, we got legal right to y'all, man. Y'all major sinners. Your daddy, your granddaddy, your great granddaddy, y'all. You might not even know your dad. Oh, but the enemy do? Oh yeah, we got you, man. Your dad, your granddad, your ooh, 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 yeah. And then next thing you know, Yahusha sets up these assemblies. <laughs> they step in the assembly then. The strong leader comes, but the strong leader comes and says, oh yeah, nope, time is up, get out. For real. The gates of Sheol can't do nothing. They can't prevail against that. For real. And so that's new territory taken for you. Yeah. So this is kind of what was hitting my Ruach when you were saying that. And I don't know that I ever realized this before. So here's an example. Like, would it make sense to say that we in the midst of America? We just going to use that term, right? We in the midst of America and I'm going to plant something in Texas and then say, but the gates of Germany won't prevail against it. Why would you say that? What do you mean the gates of Germany? We're in, we're in America. It's Texas. Germany's not here. Where would you have to be for their gates not to prevail against it? You have to be there. So what this is saying is he's like, it's, it, it'd be better to say, hey, we're going to go to Germany. I'm going to plant this here and the gates of Germany won't prevail against it. That's, that's the invasion. That's, that's the inv invasion language. So when he was talking about uh, um, invade, it's really about invading Sheol. Because yeah. see, all of our bloodlines, see, bloodline, your bloodline attached to your soul. So in your soul is all of this stuff that they got rights to. During deliverance, this is, this is the picture of what happens. This is wild that you brought this up. I was like, man, this is crazy. During deliverance, we take this flag, we go to Sheol in your soul. Take this flag and plant this here for Yahuwah. And Yahuwah like, hey, on this, you see this rock? This rock is Sheol. And all these gates around it not going to prevail against it. So it's, it's, a, it's a literal invasion because it don't make sense for you to say the gates of Sheol won't prevail against you if you're not in Sheol. That's... Oh, yeah, no, that's it. <laughs> no, that's it. That's it, man. That is it. That's why this was such a huge uh, 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 turning point in the script when, this, when, it, when he had this discussion with Kepha. Uh But keep going. Verse 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of Shamahim. You see, now I was talking about the key. Now he's talking about the kingdom now. See what I'm saying? So that's proven. Keep going. And whatever you buy on on the arrets will be bound in the shamaim. Whatever you loose on the arrets will be loosed in the shamaim. That's the authority that's given to the Kodashim and the assemblies for the invasion. The authority to bind and loose things and it'll be, be, be aligned with the shamaim from the bind and loose perspective. Yeah, why do y'all think Malek and them, like the Most High has been talking about this invasion a lot, man? Let's keep going. Verse 20. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Yusha HaMashiach. Hallelujah. 21. Let's go back to Viker 26. Start with verse 13. I am Yahuwah, your Lua, who brought you out of the land of Mizraim, that you shall not be their slaves. 
I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you walk upright. But if you do not obey me and do not observe all these commandments. So in other words, if you don't receive the word, so in other words, if you, if, if you move in pride, if you move in disobedience, okay, let's keep going. And if you despise my statutes, or if, you, or if your soul abhors my judgments, so that you do not perform all my commandments, but break my covenant, I also... So let me see what that word break is. I think that's what I think it is, parar. It is, yep. Man. So parar, when it says break my covenant, so that's the same. That's the word for so that's the word for bull. Pay resh par. Parar is about again speaking a word against the two chiefs. Speaking against the two heads. Speaking against the chiefs. A word against the two chiefs, Parars, H6565, pay, rest, rest. It's also about speak, uh, speaking against your mother and father, not honoring your mother and father. And that could, I, that could apply to your, uh, to your hundredfold mother and father too. You see what I'm saying? Let's keep going. And if you despise my statutes, or if you are sold, abhors my judgments, so that you do not perform all my commandments, but break my covenant, I also will do this to you. I will even appoint terror over you, wasting disease and fever, which shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. I will set my face against you, and you shall be defeated by your enemies. But remember, Yahushua said, with the assemblies, the gate of she gates of Shia will not prevail against it. Mm -hmm. So that's why in the, if, if you're going to be able to make it in the assemblies, you're going to have to be uh, all the way lined up with the commandments. Mm -hmm. All the way submitted, because Yahushua not going to have it to where uh, his assemblies is getting overtaken because they're sending the camp. He established it now, man. And I'm, these assemblies, oh, they're going to be a powerhouse. The gates of Shio will not prevail against it. Because the assemblies is, 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 a social, is, is the hundredfold family. That's what's in these assemblies. And in the Jubilee, or, and in Leviticus 26 earlier, the, one of the blessings of those who keep his commandments is that a hundred will have the, the multitudes that will be, cha they will be chasing the multitudes. Y'all, I can't tell y'all how uh, doing the deliverance, how it, um, when you see the fear on these Ruachs, man. <laughs> like when it says a hundred will we'll send a multitude to flight. When, when you're looking at a whole celestial being that's, I mean, scared straight from your presence. Trying to run away, trying to, trying to hide in the person. <laughs> How many times they try to hide in the person? You're like, oh no, uh-uh. No, you're not finna hide, come on, no, come on. For real. It'll be, it was, it was times when we know uh, that we're, we're gonna do deliverance on this person and all of a sudden that person calls and be this, yeah, I just, I I'm not going to make it today to Shabbat. <laughs> right. They didn't know they was going to, they was going about to go through deliverance, but that Ruach did. Mm -hmm. I don't think I am, you know, I'm just really tired. I'm just really not feeling it right now. <laughs> hey, listen, it, it, whenever that's something like that, that's when you for sure need to go. So I'm trying to keep you from coming. Probably <laughs> about to be some sort of delivery. Um. Yeah. Come 
come in, go through a deliverance. We don't know until after the deliverance. Then the deliverance in there. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that. Do y'all know we almost, I wasn't even, I almost wasn't gonna come. Man, because as soon as I woke up, this happened and that happened, and I just wasn't feeling it, and my husband was tripping, whatever, you know. I was like this close to not going. Come in. Like, yeah, them Ruas be knowing. When they know, when they know, they know when their time is almost up. For real. But my point is the level of dominion. Sometimes I just, I can't, I try to emphasize to y'all who y'all are. That's why I really want a lot of, I, I, want, a, I, I want to get more people moving in deliverance. It'll help you to understand who you are, man. The authority that Yahuwah has given us. For real. That when it says a hundred will send the multitudes to flight. They don't want no parts of that. Some of y'all are still scared of ants and spiders. <laughs> Roaches and spiders. Not realizing the level of dominion that the Most High has given you. Because they don't want no parts of Yahusha. It ain't really about you. But they don't want no parts of Yahusha. We in covenant with Yahusha, man. So they know they mess with us. They got to mess with him. Think about the people y'all in covenant with, husbands. Somebody going to be able to just come up to your wife and push her? Move. Huh? Hey, you right there. You just right there. Oh, no. You're going to feel every ounce of that push as if they pushed you. And it, it, you ain't going to think twice. You ain't going to think before some hands fly or something. Going in on them. For real. They don't want no parts of that. We in covenant with Yahushua, man. One of the, we are the highest ranking order. But see, if you don't know who you are, you can get scared of a Ruach. Especially if you're scared of like roaches and stuff. Oh yeah, Ruach, oh man. They'll contort, they'll make the person bend, make the person float. They'll growl, they'll do everything. And if you don't know your authority, you might get scared. But if you know your authority, they can do all that. <laughs> You show them you're not scared. Oh, man, that, that growling going to stop real quick. and be trying to run. They're going to be begging you. Man, we had Ruach's begging us, for real. No, no, please, no. No, no. Get out. <laughs> Go, get out. No. Go to dry places, for real. For real, why? They'll be like, why, why? It's your fault. They'll start pointing at the spouse. We had one time, man. They start pointing at the spouse. It's your fault. It's the reason why. It's your fault. Because it was the spouse got them in the truth. <laughs> For real. No, I'm serious, y'all. For real. And it's zero mercy. Like, I don't care. I be telling them, don't talk to me. Don't tell, I, don't talk to me, man. For real. Just get out. Just come out. But we'll talk about that more um, as, we, as we get a chance to maybe have some opportunities to have um, more people moving in deliverance on how to move if a, a Ruach manifests while you're doing the deliverance and how to, yeah, no, don't do no talking to no Ruach. Oh, no. Don't, don't stunt nothing they saying. They might bring up something that's, that you know they know about you or something to try to push a button. Don't. don't just get out, just come out. You know what I'm saying? Um, they'll try to beg you, all that stuff, man, for real. You'll know the difference when it's between it's the real regular person or it's a Ruach, the Ruach. So, so a lot of people have Ruachs in them. But there's a difference between somebody having Ruachs in them and somebody being possessed by the Ruach. When you're demonically possessed, it's not you talking no more, it's not you anymore. 
like the Ruach has fully possessed that person and and he's talking through that person. You see what yeah, they usually don't they usually black out. And um Yeah. You gotta know the difference of when you're talking to that person and you're talking to actually the uh the Ruach behind the person. It's kinda like what we talked about with Ezekiel twenty eight. How um the most high had Ezekiel to prophesy against the king of Tyre, but he just started when he went straight to the house of Tyre. He wasn't really he stopped talking to Tyre because it was really that king was probably fully possessed by Asadon. He probably was like fully giving oh, that's why he did it like that. But um But we'll see. We'll pray on it and see how the best way to move with that. Uh let's uh let's get hands. Huh? Oh yeah. We're gonna get there. Uh, let me get a hand. Who has all done a deliverance before? No, not went through deliverance. I'm sorry. Who has actually done a deliverance on someone else? Yes. I thought it was more than that. Who actually uh, done a deliver? Who actually uh, moved in a, in the deliverance uh, before? You get what I'm saying? I know Shimshon, I know Doror. But yeah, I think I remember Ima Oria. I thought it was more people though. Kaya. Oh, they all didn't make it. I thought so too. We gotta to go back and look at our notes. Y'all didn't do it, Kaya? Yeah, I know for sure you did. Oh, the Roy definitely. Okay, we'll we'll follow up. We'll follow up. All right. Because again, y'all never know when you might have to do that. You know, you be at work or something, or you be somewhere else. You know, and um, the Ruach manifests, and you, you, it's. You just need to do deliverance on the person. You know, you just never know. So. You just never know. I'm just saying. Well, it's, it's whatever Yahuwah wants, though. Because you never know what Yahuwah needs somebody to do. What wants somebody to do. Because, see, this is the thing. When it comes to deliverance, it's also a lot of times attached to healing. So if somebody falls out, they they, they foaming at the mouth or something. Uh, everybody just thinks it's, it's seizures. And it, the Most High gives you the um, discernment that that's a, it's a ruach. And go on, the Most High might want you to go and cast it out, for real. Like, for real. You know? Yeah. All right. So, um, all right. Let's finish up. Let's finish up. So, um, Vicar 26, verse 17. 17. Let's go. I will set my face against you, and you shall be defeated by your enemies. Those who hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when no one pursues you. And after all this, if you do not obey me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Verse 19, I will break the pride of your power. Mm. I will make your heavens lack iron and your earth lack bronze. Mm. And your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield its produce nor shall the trees of the land yield their fruit. Then, if you walk contrary to me and are not willing to obey me, I will bring on you seven times more plagues according to your sins. Man. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children, destroy your livestock, and make you few in number, and your highways shall be desolate. Verse 23. 
And if by these things you are not reformed by me, but walk contrary to me, then I also will walk contrary to you, and I will punish you yet seven times for your sins. I will bring a sword against you that will execute the vengeance of the covenant. Man, the vengeance of the covenant. Keep going. When you are gathered together within the cities, I will send pestilence among you, and you shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. When I have cut off your supply of bread, 10 women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall bring back your bread by weight. Y'all see how many women that is? Mm -hmm. That's 10, and that's the number of obedience and submission. But it said they shall bake your bread in one oven, and then and they shall bring back your bread by weight, and you shall eat and not be satisfied. Remember, we're talking about that the bread is gonna be here and the seven assemblies, the revelation, the word. And it's, it's a scarcity, it's a famine of bread. And so, um, that's the plight for those who go on, who are going against the commandments. So that's the that's the double side of the number ten. Those who are submitted, and then those who are rebellious. Those who are keeping the commandments, and those who are going against the commandments. So you got the number ten for those who are submitted, but then there was ten plagues that hit Mitzrayim for those who weren't submitted. You know what I'm saying? Judgment. It's so. Let's keep going. Verse twenty-seven. And after all this, if you do not obey me, but walk contrary to me, then I also will walk contrary to you in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. You shall eat the flesh of your sons, and you shall eat the flesh of your daughters. I will destroy your high places, cut down your incense altars, and cash your carcasses on the lifeless forms of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. I will lay your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries to desolation, and I will not smell the fragrance of your sweet aromas. Otherwise, you're not gonna receive your offerings. Yeah, keep going. I will bring the land to desolation, <clears throat> and your enemies who dwell in it shall be astonished at it. I will scatter you among the nations and draw you out a sword after you. Your land should be desolate and your city's waste. That's what happened. We'll scatter amongst the nations. Keep going. Oh. Then the land shall enjoy the Sabbath. Oh, you see this is surrounded around the Sabbath still. Mm -hmm. Keep going. As long as it lies desolate and you are in your enemy's land, then the land shall rest and enjoy its Sabbaths. As long as it lies desolate, it shall rest for the time it did not rest on your Sabbaths when you dwelt in it. So basically he's saying because y'all didn't keep the Shabbats. That was in the previous chapter. That's how you see these, are, these two chapters are connected to each other. Hallelujah. This is what happens when you don't keep the Jubilee. This is what happens when you don't keep the, the Shemitah years, the Sabbath years, the Shabbats. Keep going. Verse 36. And as for those of you who are left, I will send faintness into their hearts in the land of their enemies. The sound of a shaken leaf should cause them to flee. They should flee as though fleeing from a sword. They shall fall when no one pursues. They shall stumble over one another as it were before a sword when no one pursues. So this is what was happening to some of these people that were speaking against um, Rebirth. They were like, oh, and it's just, uh, you know, so fear, fear, what? Fear of what, what? Yeah. Ain't nobody coming, ain't nobody worried about y'all like that. But this is what it is. Like you in dread, you, you're running, but no one's pursuing. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Just keep going. They should stumble over one another as it were before a sword when no one pursues and you shall have no power to stand before your enemies. 
you shall perish among the nations, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And those of you who are left shall waste away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands, mm. also in their father's iniquities, which are with them, they shall waste away. Verse 40. But if they confess their iniquity in the iniquity of their fathers. Yeah, I remember this happened. This was what came up uh, in Shavuot. Mm -hmm. That's how you see all this is related to each other. This is related to the Jubilees, related to the Shavuot, number 50. But if they confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers, remember we just did that on Shavuot. Mm -hmm. With their unfaithfulness in which they were unfaithful to me. See, unfaithful means inconsistent. You're not consistent in what you did. You're not, you're not being faithful. It's, you're not rooted. You're not grounded. Keep going. And that they also have walked contrary to me. And that I also have walked contrary to them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If their uncircumcised hearts are humble. Are what? Uncircumcised hearts are humble. Are what? Humble. Are what? Humble. That's the opposite of being prideful, right? But if you are humbled, because these plagues and these judgments are to humble you. This captivity was to humble us. So if our uncircumcised hearts are humble and they do what? Accept their guilt. That's being able to say that, man, this, this, this was just. Like what happened to us was, it, it was just. Because of what we broke the covenant. Verse 42. Then I will remember my covenant. Yes, sir. With your code. In my covenant with Yisak, in my covenant with Abraham, yep. I will, will remember. I will remember the land. Yes, sir. The land also should be left empty by them, and will and will enjoy its Sabbaths while it lies desolate without them. They will accept their guilt. Yep. Because they despise my judgments, and because their soul abhorred my statutes. Yet for all that, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, nor shall I abhor them to utterly destroy them and break my covenant with them. For I am Yahuwah, their Lua, but for their sake, I will remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought out of the land of Misraim in the sight of the nations, that I might be their Elohim, be their Elua, I'm sorry. I am Yahuwah. These are the statutes and the judgments and laws which Yahuwah was, Yahuwah made between himself and the children of Israel on the Mount Sinai by the hand of Moshe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll praise to the Most High. But yeah, that's all I had. All righty, so we are going to jump into the Q and A. And it's at 846. This is from Nathaniel. Concerning the anti-Messiah and blasphemy, I think Yerobam, he can, he can, he gonna eat down here? That's, okay, either one's fine, he can go up there. Down here. I think Yerobam could be an example of what the anti-Messiah would do. I believe he was the one who turned the entire northern kingdom from Yahuwah and worshiped golden calves. He even went so far as to create his own feast days. His blasphemy was so great that every king after him followed his wicked ways. So it was said in the Bible, and he did not turn away from the sins of Yeroboam. God, I think that's a pretty good example of what that would look like. They even have the same ending. Uh, basically going into a lake of fire. 
you're a bomb at the same end. Man, you own it, Nathan. Yeah, that's that's it. From Anthony, little Anthony. Oh man, we did not get a hundred percent this time. We will get it next time. I know it. Uh, all right, through through attitude. Gadola Bakash Safiyahu. Shabbat Shalom and double honors to Abba Amma, honors to where it's, where it is due. What's so powerful, what Mushal said about gates. When we were outside waiting to enter Shabbat I was meditating while in line and Yahuwah showed me that we were in line to go into the gates of the Shamayim. I remember you saying that. Yeah. Like leaving Sheol to enter. Hallelujah. I call Esh, Saf Yahoo. I remember somebody from leadership saying those impartations help you endure to the next season or feast day. Gone. Gone. It helps you get through this cycle because you won't even make it through that cycle, man. You won't. So I put feast days equal Moadim, Moadim equal appointed time. The times that Yahuwah meets with us, that's what the appointed time is. Uh, it's the intimate times when Yahuwah imparts into his bride. So let's just go back to what you were saying. That's why, man, Shabbat's too, but Shabbat's technically like a Moed, but it's just different, especially them three that we, you know, we talk about. Those three are just different. No, you got to do it all. The Shabbat is extremely important. Extremely. But you got to do it all. You got to do that and the feast days. See, y'all got to understand what Babylon did to get you sealed to this world. The, when, when you got the mark of the beast, you all the way sealed to the world like they. So you do the Christmas, you do the Easter, you do the uh, Thanksgiving, you do all those things. And then they have, um, they have their Yom Rishon, they have their Shabbat told out about. And then, so you doing that. And um, um, they, they have you doing idolatry even when you don't realize it. Um, you know, you have you bowing to the tree. You know, pledging allegiance to the flag every day, doing stuff, different things like that. Um, I mean, they go to great lengths to seal you to Babylon. And so, when you seal to Yahuwah, you got to do it all. You got to do it all, man, to stay, to stay grounded and, and, to, and to continue to move forward. Let's keep going. Because Uri, I put the picture in the chat of Shimini. She's oh, let me say this. That's what I was gonna say. Um, we're wired, like the Most High created us. It's in us to celebrate holidays. It is. It's in us. It's, yeah, it's in us to to have to, to to party, to have party celebrations, memorials. He actually wired us that way. And so when you're not doing the things of Yahuwah, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna gravitate to something else. It's, it's, you're gonna do something to have to fill that void. And that's why when you don't keep the commandments, you end up being, having a mark of the beast on you. That's why that's how it always works. Bakir Ezra Yuri, I put That's also why, man, it's the last thing. <laughs> That's also why the beast went through great lengths to change the, the feast days and stuff. Nathaniel mentioned Jeroboam when he did that. That's why he did that. That's why the fourth beast, which is the Catholic system, the, you know, the European system did that. They literally came in and said, we're going to change the Shabbat to, 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 to Sunday. They did. Like they made a whole decree uh, and, it, and, it, and it was... There's a reason, y'all gotta really ask questions. Why does all churches worldwide keep Sunday? That was came down from the decree, y'all, from the top down. That they were gonna change the, it was the, could, see the, um, the Christian church, they all come from Catholicism. Catholicism is the mother of all the Christian churches. So that's why they all keep Christmas and Sunday because it's the Catholics who have solidified that through decree. You know, we know about Constantine, you know, and different things, you know. They, they specifically did it because they didn't want, they didn't want 
the Romans that uh, they didn't want, there was too much um, influence that the Yahudim had over their citizens. It's the same thing that Jeroboam did. It's the same reason why Jeroboam did it. And so, oh no, we'll change it. We'll set up our own feast days and stuff. Because once they get you out of, out of alignment with the feast days, they can get you out of alignment with the Most High. They can get you out of alignment with the Shaman. Like y'all don't realize how like doing the feast days, how that keeps you in the Shaman, how that keeps you set apart. The Shabbats and feast days, you don't even be worried. You don't even be knowing when it's Christmas no more. You be trying to go to the grocery store, it's closed. Oh, it's Christmas? Oh, man. Oh, go on, man. I was trying to give me some bread. <laughs> it causes you to be, you don't, you don't realize it. It's just you moving in obedience and then you slowly, who is taking your heart away, away from Babylon. And you totally detached from it. You don't even be knowing when, it, when you were attached to Babylon, you, couldn't, you were doing the countdown. You were counting down to Christmas like you're counting to Homer, for real. You was. You was. 20 days left to Christmas. 19 days, I can't wait. You count down to Homer to Christmas, fam. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, man. All right, uh, we at 9.43. So, Pakir Ezra Uriah, she put a shimini in here and she put the definition. Pulling the seed out of Babylon by sacrifice. Pulling the seed out of Babylon by sacrifice, that's it. Yeah, she, uh, she had her notes. She put it in. Uh, Shamar, Abad Torah, Rest of Safiyahu. They thought they were the same person because of the power behind them, the same Moloch. They thought they were the same person. Are you talking about Yahusha? Oh yeah, out of, out of Matthew. You talking about, yeah, Yehuganani, Immersa, Eliyahu. Okay. Right, so that's a third point because see, the reason why people were, he was doing all the same, he was doing a lot of the same things. You see, when y'all read about the prophets like Elijah and Elisha, they did a lot of the same things Yahushua did. They resurrected. Yahushua wasn't the first person that brought somebody back from the dead. Y'all, the prophets were doing stuff like that. Elisha had brought a feet, uh, or was it Elijah? One of them had brought a, 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 a little girl from the dead too, just like Yahushua did. They were healing the sick. They were doing miracles. He, um, you know, let's go. So they were, they were like, man, he's one of the prophets. You know, they're like, oh, he's Elijah. It's Elijah. But yeah, because it was with the same power. Um, <laughs> nothing else say he was just about to say that <laughs> I believe him <laughs> a call that says reminds me of a vision I had this week after prayer of being pulled out of Sheol into Abraham's bosom by Malachim reminds me of a vision oh yeah when we was talking about the gates of Sheol Khan, 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 Khan. hallelujah Amaria, Safiyahu Wow, that brought me back to a dream that I had where I had a rare blood type and these quote-unquote men were coming after me. And now that I understand it, they were other nations that were after me but couldn't get to me. The men were of the other, another nation in my dream. 
There was also a woman that was trying to protect me in the dream. She was trying to give me her car to get out of there, and I just remember the woman being Hebrew. Mm. Was that a long time ago? Well, like more than a year ago? Wow. Kado Kaya Ah. It's amazing when you say that you do not know who my father is when you are at work and all of a sudden they get quiet because they do know, they know. God, God, you don't know who my father is. They know what you mean by that. <laughs> yeah. Hoda said, Toda Rabah Mushal, praise Yahusha. So I was studying Psalm 24 over the week and it says, who shall ascend into the hill of Yahuwah? Or who shall stand in his Kodesh place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive a blessing from Yahuwah in righteousness. In righteousness from the allure of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him. That seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. I was studying clean hands and a pure heart. But, uh, a lot of noise, y'all. It's a lot of noise. We almost done. We almost done. So uh, I'm gonna start. So I was studying clean hands and a pure heart. So clean, Naki, Nakai, Naki. So clean, which is Naki, hands, cough. Man, y'all was just talking about that. Pure bar and heart lib. So I'm going to hewn in on hands because this is what I would say lying on. So hands in Hebrew is. So hands in Hebrew is kaf pay. And I was trying to figure out what did hands have to do with your lips. So the breakdown I got was the offering of the lips. But now I get it. It's receiving a word. Mm. Hold on. Wait a second. Kaf pay. So. Yeah, it's receiving a word. He who can receive a word. Also, the word came out today through prophecy. Ascend, ascend, ascend. So for you to ascend to the hill of Yahuwah, you have to be able to receive a word. Man. Hold on, I got to read that one more time, y'all. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So hands in Hebrew is kaf, pay. So kaf, pay is hand. So hands in Hebrew is kafe, and I was trying to figure out what did hands have to do with your lips. So the breakdown I got was the offering of the lips, but now I get it. It's receiving a word. He who can receive a word, that's kafe. Receiving a word, kafe. Also the word came out today through prophecy, ascend, ascend, ascend. So for you to ascend to the hill of Yahuwah, you have to be able to receive a word. Praise Yahuwah. Toda Rosha for bringing this to my remembrance. Then she said, Naki, a continuous cycle of being made. Kaf, by receiving a word so that Leb, the authority within, can bar, dwell in the house of the chief. Man. Clean hands, pure heart. Yeah, that's deep. Kado Kaya I said, Every Shabbat is purging and cleansing from Babylon. And then Imayasa dropped this picture in the chat. Sunday, first day of the week, it's Sabbath, seventh day of the week. So he's, it goes into. Oh yeah, read the quote. Yes, ma'am. All right. So this is from, this is from the Catholic Record. That's why you were screaming evil when he said that. Wicked. London, Ontario, September first, nineteen twenty-three. This is what they said. The Catholic said, "The Church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observant from Saturday to Sunday is proof positive of that fact." <laughs> 
That is the most backwards logical argument you can make. That's it. He speak blasphemies. And then this is, they go on. This is another quote. It says, it is always somewhat laughable to see the Protestant churches in pulpit and legislation demand the observance of Sunday, of which there is nothing in their Bible. Peter R. Kramer, Catholic Church Extension Magazine. Yeah, that's just the craziest argument. I have authority over you. Then here's the proof. I just said I did. That's crazy. All right, y'all, that's it. Hallelujah. I can control us say wickedness. Now that's it. One more? Oh, okay. Oh, Godola said all the churches are the daughters of the Catholic Church. That's it. All of them. Even non-denominational. -de the Catholics. Yeah, I told my mom that she was a Catholic. She ain't, yeah. She ain't even, I didn't get that. Yeah. All right, so uh, daughters in the back, there was a mess made again. Let's get that up. And then once y'all are done, Yeladim, y'all can go eat. Yasha, Matt, uh, Jackson. Yeladim, y'all can go eat. Rebirth of a nation. Hebrew kingdom building.